Um, so her, hello everyone, so my name is Chuang Gan. Uh, I'm a researcher from MIT IBM Lab. And today I'm very excited to share uh, our team's work and it's a little bit from, uh, from currently uh, uh, trend that training and the transformer. Uh, so, but I will show another perspective that uh, how we can uh, integrate the neural and the symbolic and the application on the dynamic visual reasoning. So uh, training deep neural work has achieved many success, uh, including the upright detection, uh, video recognition, mature translation, and speech recognition. And also there's a, a, a tremendous effort recently using uh, something like perceived wireless to unify all these perceptual offer, uh, efforts. And even of this, uh, some of this model uh, achieve the better performance that's bit of human. So on basis of this success, um, it's tempting for us to think that deep learning may already achieve the human level intelligence and uh, uh, what's not to do. But, but actually there are also some uh, technical reasons for us to resist this temptation. First, the deep learning is really data hungry and it always require massive label data for model training. And secondly, it always have limited ability to adapt or generalize to new concepts and new scenarios. So this system actually differs a lot from human intelligence in terms of what data efficiency, flexibility, and generalization. So here, uh, I will first show how a baby learning about this work. So in this video, he seems doing something a little bit random, hanging up together, making stack, knocking them over, and hearing the clatter. There might be a few things that her parents taught her before, but mostly he's employing in her own. He can leverage all the sun to figure out how things work. He can, assay, uh, uh, he, he can associate how this cup looks like with how to feel and how to feel with how it sounds. Essentially, he's building a causal model of the world to explain what has happened, infer what is about to happen, and plan its action accordingly. So replicating that kind of intelligence in machine will equip us with the same level of human intelligence. So in today's talk, I will introduce two, line, diff, uh, two different line work. And the first line work is that we will show how to augment the deep neural network with structured and often, and, and, and often symbolic human priorities for multimodal dynamic reading. And then I will discuss our ongoing effort on building world simulator and indicate the potential way that the type of simulator can be useful to building machine agents that learn like a child in the physical and model and the multimodal related virtual world. So I will first like to give a very quick overview about uh, I mean a very popular and fundamental task of Asian language, namely visual question answering. So visual question answering aim to um, I mean uh, I mean you give an images a natural language question about images. This is a big way task aimed to uh, provide, uh, so to provide the accurate natural language answers. So in recent years, we have seen many success using uh, people learning to tackle the challenge with reasoning. Even though the impressive as the accuracy of growth, it's still like the, uh, like piano. I mean, why there is a model just, just leveraging the correlations or it really can perform the grounded visual reasoning. So, so to mitigate this issue, I mean, Justin Johnson from uh, 2009, uh, 2017 introduced uh, a, an interesting synthetic image data set called Clever. I think many people you uh, might know the data set. And even though it's in the synthetic scene, but it, it, can, it, it can be very useful to diagnose the visual reasoning ability. So one unique perspective of Clever that it does not rely on complex or real world visual scenes on the, on the language, but the difficulty of the Clever must uh, most come from the compositional of of uh, of, 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 of the compositional of attributes and the, the underlying logic. So and also uh, I mean so, um, as I mentioned earlier, there's a lot of undertwined uh, people at work, and there are common strategies that uh, uh, include an image encoder, a question encoder, and the reason module to predict the answer to the question. Even though it's really powerful. But actually, there are two things to be learned in, the, in this loop. First, it's a concept such as the meaning of the right. And second, it's the ability to reason, such as the functionality, uh, uh, I mean, such as the functionality of counting objects. So in such end twin design, concept learning and the reasoning are entangled with each other. So it's really a part of, 
hard to understanding what this model actually learn and whether they really learn about to do the reasoning or, and, uh, and also the meaning of the word or how to uh, and, and also the land and also the under, underlying logic to perform this reasoning. But we can also take a look at how human perform this kind of reasoning. So give a question like, are there an equal number of large things, a middle sphere? What human do is that? He will first identify, uh, so he, uh, he will first identify all the large objects from these images and count the number. Okay, there are three large things here. And then he will perform the same operation on the middle sphere. There are also three middle spheres. And finally, he will compare the two numbers he counted and generate an answer, yes. So every reading step, it, it, it grounded with perception, longer understanding, and logic reasoning. So inspired by this work that we have building a first, uh, 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 first framework named Neurosymbolic Visual Reasoning. This is a, a joint work with Katin Yi, a mentor at Howard uh, uh, Physics Department. So the basic idea we are trying to do that, motivated by this previous human reasoning example, we, what we really do that, we really want to separate from, uh, I mean, we want to separate the visual reasoning process from three dependent components, including visual perception, question answering, and logic reasoning. So you may be curious that how, uh, I mean, uh, uh, how this kind of, uh, I mean, neuro symbolic model can be generalized to the video understanding. This is also probably, uh, I mean, the goal of this workshop, how we can, um, I mean, learning from multiple sensory and to better understanding the, uh, to understanding the video cultural structures. So a human look at this video shown, not only we can describe the event that happened, but we can also reason about the causal structure behind the event, making prediction about the future, and even imagine some unobserved counterfactual scenarios. So we believe a smart AI system should not only focus on the pattern recognition problem, but most, in, but most importantly, it should have the ability to capture the causal and effects in the field of work. So together with MIT, Howard, as well as Pitman, we built a new video reading data set named Clever, collision event for video representation and reasoning to push the boundary of temporal and causal reasoning of videos. So this collaborative data set, uh, it, it, it consists of around 20,000 synthesis video. And, uh, and, uh, and also with the question with the wild control the bears. And the question types, uh, including four different tasks focused on temporal and causal reading, including descriptive, explanatory, predictive, as well as counterfactual. So let's now take some, uh, uh, let's take a look at some example of this, uh, of this data set. So among the four type of this, uh, this four type of question, this critical question asks the agent to answer the video, uh, answer questions happened during this video. For example, what is the material of the last object collided with the sand cylinder? The answer should be the middle one. So if the question will ask the model to explain a cause of specific event, uh, I mean, by specifying another event or object that is responsible to it. In this example, the collision between the rubber sphere and the sand cylinder push the cylinder to make another cylinder to the middle cylinder. So therefore we can regard the second collision to be caused by the first. So the answer should be the second one. The collision between the rubber cylinder and the rubber rubber sphere is responsible for uh, the two collisions. So for predictive question, uh, we are trying to query about the future event after the video terminates. So in this example, the middle sphere will keep moving along the white arrow and collide with the red sphere. So the answer should be the, in the future, the red sphere will collide with this middle sphere. A uh, counterfactual question is the most challenging uh, question type in this data set. So it requires the model to imagine the outcome when, the, uh, when one object is removed from scene and select the event that will happen under this unobserved scenario. For example, when we ask what will happen without the sand cylinder, the answer should be a second one. The red rubber sphere and the gray object 
uh, will collide. So to better understanding how training about data side, we first examine many uh, video reasoning uh, 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 that were actually in this data side, and very interesting. And even I mean, so the most I mean, so while the mic network that is a self attention based uh, uh, end neural architecture achieve more than eighty five accuracy on this descriptive question, but it has, it performs very poorly on remaining three challenging tasks. So this means that currently deep learning model is still trying to capture this kind of correlation in the video. This is the reason why they can perform very well on the descriptive question, but when it came to the uh, understanding cause and effect, all the model is failed. So our perspective to solve this kind of causal reasoning task, we believe a model should be leveraging the structural operation reputation and implicitly capture the dynamic of video interstates and building the causal model to reason the question uh, accordingly. So based on this observation, we design a new model called neural symbolic dynamic reasoning which can use in the structural visual and long representation to try hold this kind of causal reading task. So uh, our model is consists of three key components. Uh, in the first, our model uh, using deep neural work, a uh, pass, pass each video frame into an operator centric structural representation that including the position information as well as static attributes such as color and the shape of each object. And then we will send this representation to a dynamic model to predict of their trajectory across in different frames. Here, we're using a graphing network to approximate the physical dynamics. And then the input question is passed into program representing its, log uh, its, under uh, its underlying logic by using a sequence to sequence neural network. And finally, the program is executed by a symbolic filter on the predicted motion trajectory to, uh, to predict an answer of this question. So here I will give a concrete example how this uh, neural symbolic model performs this kind of counterfactual reasoning. So here the upper window will show the input video, and the lower window will show the predicted motion trajectory when the sign cinder is removed. So from this video, we can find that our model is able to capture the counterfactual event without even. Uh, we present the observation and answer the question accurately. And here we also show, uh, I mean, it's a, a quantitative evaluation, and it can be found that uh, it's, uh, our model improved the performance on the challenging data set, especially on more challenging independently predictive and counterfactual question. So this is show that it, this kind of challenging dynamic and causal reasoning, uh, I mean, there's a still missing component for all the end-to-end -end neural architecture is about dynamic reasoning. However, this model also has a, uh, I mean, a major limitation that is always required then supervision on the physical object property, uh, I mean, on each trade object, uh, object attribute and also the physical event. And all this data need to come from the simulation, which might not be practical to obtain in the real life. So, uh, to solve this problem in a recent, per, uh, in a recent paper led by Jin Feng Chang, uh, he's a postdoc with me at MIT API Lab. So we propose a new model named dynamic concept reasoning that can learn visual concept and object by only watching raw video and reading pair question and answer. So the basic idea of uh, this dynamic concept learning is that we gave an input video and the corresponding question and the choice. So we first using a program parser to parse the question and the trial into function program. And then we'll apply an object trajectory detector to each of all the trajectory uh, of all the object in the video. And then we will each of, uh, so people send the each the object to a dynamic predictor to predict their dynamic. And then the each the uh, object and then send to the feature iterator to try the latent representation of this object and event. And finally, we feed the past program latent representation to the symbolic cuter to answer the question and optimize the concept embedding. So here we give a more detail how we quantize the dynamic concept embedding. Uh, I mean, so we first using a procession model to try the feature for each object trajectory. And then we will project this object trajectory feature into a latent space. 
and calculate the cosine similarity between the projected feature and the concept embedding to predict the, uh, the object concept. And all these operations are differentiable. So the question answering logs can then be better weight and optimizes the perception model and concept embedding in the end to end uh, fashion. So this uh, new model can be directed to implicitly grounding object and event in the video, uh, including the, uh, I mean, so the attribute, uh, I mean, so the collision and the moving event, as well as uh, some, uh, uh, some other properties. And uh, uh, we also achieved the SODA result on this kind of uh, challenging collateral uh, data side, uh, especially on the last three most challenging data uh, quick set that we require to understand the dynamic and causal. Um, so we also uh, can find that this kind of new model can also easily generate to other tasks, for example, the video grounding. So in, the, in this task that gave them a quick, uh, you, we gave them a query expression in the video, and it can provide a special temporal localization of described object and event in the video. For example, if we want to localize the collision that happens after the blue sphere exists the scene, so our model can achieve a much stronger performance in this kind of challenging special temporal grounding task. Uh, but end to end model failed to do that. And we also can do some interesting video test retrieval tasks. For example, we gave a long test description. How about, uh, uh, we, uh, I mean, so we ask agent to retrieve all the video that contain one collision that happened before the green Uber cube enters the scene. So our model can also uh, use this kind of neural symbolic structure uh, accurately do the task. Uh, we also show that the model can also extend to some uh, to learn some new concept on the real world video. So we tested this model uh, on uh, a real world uh, plugin tower, and the model can quickly learning the concept about falling here. And you might have another answer that, oh, how about we can uh, extend to, uh, I mean, this is uh, to more challenging scenario. So to answer this question, I mean, so we are uh, actually, um, actually this is a paper just accepted this morning uh, on the neural data side track. So we propose a novel, uh, I mean, benchmark for situation radio of, uh, sorry, for the situation reasoning from real world, uh, 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 from the real world video. So this examine so this data set trying to examine the dynamic of visual reasoning in more increasing uh, I mean, in the increasing complexity. So to achieve this task, the model needs to capture the presented knowledge from dynamic situation and structural representations uh, as structural representation and answer the question concurrently. So this so this data set also came with uh, four type of interesting question, including uh, asking the interaction. Uh, I mean. The sequence uh, uh, question of recording the action ordering, and also the prediction, imagine what will happen next, as well as the physical feasibility uh, uh, estimation. So, and another very interesting perspective of this, uh, 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 the situation reasoning, or in short, is the, this star benchmark. So, this data set consists of 20, uh, 20, uh, 23K video clip. And the six uh, and also over six uh, uh, also over six hundred k question. So similar to the image and the video clarity side, all the video come with the situated graph, including the annotation of human object, their interactions and the relations, and also each question come with the function program. So we can easily use this this data set to diagnose your model, to understanding what's the drawback of current either end to end model or neural symbolic model. So we are planning to host, uh, uh, I mean, it's a current challenging uh, using this benchmark, but this benchmark is already uh, public available and feel free to use that for your research. Okay. So um, in the, I mean, so in the first part of time, I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk about um, um, uh, how we can build in this kind of common sense machine that can reasoning video using language. And in the second part of my talk, I'm, I, I will introduce our, uh, I mean, uh, uh, another way to learning from multimodal data is that the learning from interaction. So a long standing goal of the, I mean, this AI research community is to, is to engineer a machine agent that can interact with the world, whether to assist around the house uh, or in the outer space. So such an AI system 
must learn to perceive and reason about the physical world around them in order to be able to manipulate objects and formulate a plan to execute the task. But a major challenge for developing and benchmarking such agents is that direct training model in the real world is very expensive and also involves some safety uh, risk. So to this end, we have building a general purpose virtual world simulator named as uh, named as the security world or in short the TW that can enable simulation high fidelity multi-sensory data as well as physical interaction between mobile agent ob and object in this rich uh, environment. So here I would like to uh, I mean give credit to uh, to awesome engineering behind this uh, simulator, Jeremy and Says. So they are both world class Unity game uh, game designing actor, and without them, that uh, I mean the simulator will not uh, able to be uh, uh, to be presented. So in this uh, virtual world environment, we can train body agent to perform tasks in a highly fidelity that kind of fits in kind of high fidelity 3D physical world. As well as we can collect the behavior of human data in the similar environment that they mimic the sensory and interacting richness of the real world. So of course, we are not the uh, only team working on this important direction. Uh, since the direct training model with real world, I mean, it's, uh, it's quite expensive. There has also actually has a growing interest in using this kind of interactive 3D simulator to develop and benchmark in body AI and the robot learning algorithm. Here also leads uh, a few representatives of this simulator, including I Gibson team from the Stanford, Habitat from the Facebook, i 2 saw from i 2 Institute, Water Home from MIT, and the Saving team from UCSD. So they all did, uh, I mean, it's, uh, I mean it's, uh, very exciting works. So maybe you will ask, oh, I mean, uh, there are so many uh, I mean, interactive simulators. So what's the unique perspective of this TDW? Uh, Platform. So, in our perspective, that all this existing uh, simulator all have their uh, uh, wire uh, advantage. But because when they design the simulator, they are often designed with some specified user case in mind. So each each is also limited in different way. I mean, in principle, that maybe some simulator is very good to uh, training the navigation. Another is very good to training the manipulate object. Uh, so, uh, I, mean, I mean, in our perspective, that switching the platform is really costly to the researcher. So we saw the need for using a single simulation environment that's broadly applicable to all the theory of intelligence by combining the reach of audio visual rendering, realistic physics, and also the flexibilities. So TW was designed to accommodate uh, I mean, a range of key domains I mean, in AI, including multimodal perception, physical scene understanding and the robot interaction with the goal that you body training each of, I mean, I mean, training in each of the domain using a single simulator. So this platform is built on top of the uh, game development platform Unity. And Unity can handle the image rendering and physics and user only need to write some Python script for very diverse user case. So, so in this how I will mainly cover two key aspects of uh, the TW environment. First, it will uh, support the real-time near photo release images, as well as high fidelity audio rendering. And secondly, the TW has very advanced spatial capability, allowing rigid body objects, solid body objects, close and fluid to interact with. And there are also, uh, and also um, there are multiple ways that we can interact with this object and generating the kind of high uh, physical related behaviors. User can affect object by directly through the API command or through the embody agent. And we can also uh, interact with them using the PR, pick up what you by using the visual representation of their uh, own hand. Okay, I will go to the detail here. So for the first part about the multi model data simulation, uh, I mean, the most seen in the TW start off with some type of environment. Our environment has spent both indoor and outdoor scenes, including several environments. I mean, it's created from the high quality scan photography uh, I mean, it's a, a site. And uh, all the environment is then populated with objects from, uh, I mean, high quality 3D models. So this model can be placed in various ways, 
and the researcher can simply write in their own controller to suit the need of individual scenes. And this information also supported by the physics based impact sound simulation. This is the leading uh, by the Professor Joshua McDermy and also some post out uh, James Tracer now joined uh, the OSU as a as his professor. So the main, uh, I mean, uh, I mean, the main unique perspective of this audio uh, agent that it can uh, doing the physics based uh, interaction. Uh, I mean, uh, it can do the physics based sound simulation. It's very different from some environmental variation used in the habitat. So we can basically adjust object property and simulate a different sound. So here is an example of the uh, uh, of the audio visual simulation generated. So uh, this uh, so this plan is already public. Uh, 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 I mean, it's already public available on the website. So feel free to use them and also reach out to us if you have any question. Uh, so another perspective, actually, I, I would also would like to mention is uh, um, I mean, so the key value. I mean, so when we develop this kind of engine, we keep in mind that we also trying to simulate. Uh, I mean, this believable and realistic object interaction. I mean, so, uh, that can perform the accurate physics behavior. So this heat will actually including two different physics engines uh, with several different, uh, and also uh, which can serve a different uh, purpose. So the first engine is the Unity basic physics engine that can handle rigid body, uh, rigid body physics dynamic, including the collision between rigid bodies. I mean, for example, by applying a forward uh, I mean, the direction force to the object, it can, uh, I mean, so on, on the left side, it can be made to collide with other, uh, other object. And on the right side, we show that when applying an upper, uh, 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 upward uh, force at a specific point, it can keep a dining table to make object on the table slide off. So, um, and also this, uh, uh, I mean, the uh, TDR engine can also support uh, uh, I mean, it's a particle based representation that can manage a uh, deformable object interaction. So, on the left side, we're using the closed simulation to drop a ship which collided with rigid body fire hybrid object. And on the right side, a fridge, uh, uh, I mean, a fridge model is dropped into the pool of water, causing significant uh, displacement and splashing. So, dropping objects of different size, uh, mice. And all material into fluid, and then we can observe in the spread behavior. Then that can be using to estimate. Uh, I mean, this. Uh, I mean, the physical property of the falling object. And of course, uh, I mean, so, uh, uh, as uh, I mean, many simulator already did that. We also can support this kind of thing to real transfer uh, for the real role. I mean, for the real world robot. So the T level can kind of can. You know, import the standard URDF uh, robot descriptor file. This will allow the user to import their own robot model and control them inside the TW simulation. So currently, uh, we can support the uh, uh, I mean the traditional know how to I mean such um, uh, basically like some robot model including the silver fetch uh, your five your ten I mean all these models. So by using the low level API command uh, that control a robot drone, user can potentially build some high level interaction behaviors. And we also can support a human like an agent that the human node, uh, so we name it as a human node agent. So it can be designed for advanced human and robot collaboration project. So the agent will be able to physically interact with the environment at a detailed level. So we can utilize a range of photorealistic 3D model, allow the agent to be either male, female, or even a child. We can simulate the realistic body motion derived from motion capture data, and then doing the motion retargeting, we will allow the same side, I mean, the uh, motion to be applied to either adult or child, uh, I mean, so uh, of the agent. 
And also, the TW program can also support the, um, also has the kind of VR capabilities using the Oculus, uh, I mean, the uh, uh, headset. So as you can see that uh, this video provides the Sophic object interaction and control using my own kind. And then using, uh, I mean, uh, I mean so when using with our library, uh, with, with our library object and their form feeding collider, this provides a lot of opportunity for, uh, for learning complicated interaction from human data. And uh, uh, this platform actually opened up many uh, new opportunities uh, to re redefine some uh, uh, new embodied AI tasks in both photo and the physical realistic virtual environment. I mean, for example, in this year, uh, CPR conference, so we have a host, uh, um, I mean, the uh, TW transport challenges to test the agent ability to rearrange objects in a photo and, photo and also uh, uh, in a photo and the physical releasing environment. So here is a demo video. Uh, as shown in this video, uh, a robot agent that is equipped with, uh, I mean, a cell, uh, with two non-tutorial uh, non freedom articulated arm. That he, uh, the, uh, this agent is required to find a small set of, of objects scattered around the house, pick them up, and transport to them to a TDR final location. So to complete this task, so to model need to, uh, I mean, uh, uh, first uh, finding this object, and also change the state of a large number of objects, pick them up, and then transport them to the target location. So, uh, I mean, so, um, to achieve the task that uh, the agent also need to in face of the uh, uh, relatively creating a physical constraint. So we believe that uh, uh, this world simulation take a first step and to let researchers to think how to develop that kind of more human-like, uh, I mean, intelligent and the physical driven global agent, I mean, for the physical world. So at the end of this talk, I also would like to, to talk about uh, uh, I mean, the recent popular work uh, that uh, we can using this kind of simulator to doing the open-ended representation learning. Uh, so the basic idea is that uh, we believe that uh, in body agent by learning to interact with the environment, we can actively learning a representation that can be useful to downstream I mean, in body AI or uh, I mean, uh, I mean, to the downstream interaction task. So this is a joint work with uh, Yilun Du and Philip Isla from MIT. Uh, so some motivation of this work is that, uh, I mean, so we have, uh, I mean, so we have seen many success on this kind of self supervised representation learning and it's a true remarkable progress in recent years. So by subtracting the need of supervised low, uh, I mean, so it is a supervised label. So such a play, uh, I mean, such kind of approach can leverage massive uh, label image and the text that exists on the internet. So even though they are very successful, but uh, it's different from the agent of, uh, I mean, the, the baby labor. So it's very different from the baby learning in that they depend on large massive data set of, of observation to learn from. But in stark contrast, learning in biological engines that involve actively physical interaction. Infants are not endowed with many visual appearance, but they, but, but they are instead applied to obtain the such appearance from the surrounding environment. For example, by playing with the toy and with through actions such as pushing, grasping, sucking, holding, so infant can are able to obtain the appearance of texture uh, and the material as well as physics. By crawling into new room, the totally can obtain the appearance of layout and the geometry. So this setup has additional challenges toward learning these representations. So in this in this setting, algorithm must learn to selectively explore and determine which portion of the environment which allows them to most useful increase in visual appearance. Furthermore, this also must also adapt to uh, I mean the constant domain shift at any time point. They only observe visual appearance in that of particular room or that of your particular object that being interacted with. So this gave us a question. Only given an entirely uh, so only given an interactive environment without any data or task, can a model learning good visual representations? So to answer this question, we propose a new framework called curious representation. 
with control, so with conjoint learning reinforcement learning policy as well as a visual representation model. So the so the so the principle is that the policy is trained to maximize the error of representation learner. And in doing so, it insensibly to employ its environment. At the same time, the learning representation becomes stronger and stronger as the policy keeps feeding it even harder data to for, uh, for them to learn from. So we have shown that our learning representation enable promising transfer to many downstream interactive tasks, including perform and, and also in some time even perform better or comparable than the inline pre-trained method without using any supervision at all. So in addition, though, we also show that uh, I mean, even training simulator, this representation can uh, can achieve interval interval on the real image. Uh, so um, the key idea, as I mentioned, is that uh, we, we want to automatically learning this uh, kind of policy given a self supervision learning technique by training a reinforced learning algorithm uh, that to maximize the reward equal to the loss of self supervised representation learning model, and if then. We can train our self server model by minimizing the loss on the image obtained from this uh, important policy. By defining the reward to our important policy in such a manner, it serves as a natural measure, but with a note. As only, uh, I mean, on, on firm, so I mean, since only on the unfamiliar image will, uh, will make the load being larger. So the model will not train on the, uh, I mean, this uh, model have never seen this kind of image. So therefore, our model can learn to both employ the novel surrounding environment and obtain the images that are very so distinct uh, uh, from what they, they have seen in the past. So uh, here I will first show, I mean, the, uh, I mean, the exploration, uh, I mean, a quantitative evaluation of the exploration policy. Uh, we report the number of tail employed in a given scene over the course of training. So we found that our model can apply very well. Uh, I mean, so outperforming both random policy and other, uh, uh, I mean, another strong based on named R and D uh, that's used for the, uh, I mean, so, uh, R exploration. And also, it's also comparable to, to a polynomial policy, which is trained implicitly to navigate to finding a uh, new, to find novel data around the environment. And here is the visualization, uh, I mean, so to, uh, to visualize the diverse images uh, when we train this model, that we can, we can find this uh, uh, contrast, this curious representation model can um, collect more diverse images than other baselines. And we further test our model um, on more fundamental uh, embodied AI tasks. And we also compare with using the representation generating with different improving uh, uh, strategy, for example, the random or learned count based approach. Or some video game design for them, there are many uh, very hot self supervised learning model uh, in the 2D game. And also, um, uh, and also some intended uh, go condition policy. Uh, so, um, and we also compare our uh, using the weight in internalized from the image line. Uh, so, uh, so, it, so, and it's curve that he ran this kind of model in three different uh, uh, random seeds. It can finalize that the representation and learning through that can draw to embody the curious and learning can lead the best uniform learning algorithm in both object navigation and image navigation tasks. And so likely we can find that uh, using email net actually does not appear, uh, I mean, uh, that does not appear to improve uniform learning performance compared with uh, the kind of self super representative learning. And uh, we can also compare, uh, I mean, so here is a, uh, 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 Another quantity, uh, I mean, final policy evaluation. Uh, you can see that our model general performed uh, quite well. And we, could, and we can also notice a very important, uh, I mean, the, uh, I mean, the strategy to, to achieve that kind of effective representation transfer is that uh, when you transfer, you need to detach the gradient. Uh, I, mean, the, uh, I mean, basically, you need to freeze the weight of convolution. So in this way, and, and, and only tuning the uh, last height that the performance will dramatically improve tuning this kind of fine tuning. So, if, so in our work has also indicated that, uh, uh, I mean, so when we're doing this kind of curious representation pre-training, 
I mean, so this this hardware definitely learning useful reputation that uh, we can free them just uh, efficiently tuning this kind of downstream. Uh, I mean, so, uh, I, I, sorry, uh, only tuning the MRP head can achieve very efficient transfer to downstream um, embodied AI task. And as well, we also evaluate some imitation learning using vision longer instruction benchmark. And, uh, again, our model achieved the best result compared with other unsupervised representation learning method and also obtain the comparable rate result using imminent pre trained way. So here are some visualization uh, of the uh, of the model that uh, uh, I mean so, so 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 we're trying to uh, investigate to what can I will learn the, the kind of embodied representation even only from the simulation that can be also transferred to some real uh, I mean total realistic scene. Here we visualize the representation uh, from this curious representation. Uh, I mean by finding their nearest neighbor. Uh, I mean, uh, I, 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 actually, of course, in this learner by presentation is uh, So this is, uh, uh, so we tested this example on the places data side. So it, it can be compared to a random network. We definitely find a more uh, visually similar uh, neighbor. Uh, I mean, so this means that even true non simulation, uh, it, it can also show some, some promising transfer to the real world. And uh, this current representation model also public available on the website. Uh, feel free to using that one. Okay, so this is probably um, the end of my talk. I think I leave uh, additional uh, two or three minutes for uh, to take any questions. Okay. Oh, hi, uh, thank you for the talk. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it seems like we're like 10 minutes below the schedule. So um, maybe you can answer the questions in the chat. Mm -hmm. So there are a lot of questions in the chat about the TDW platform. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So, uh, so I I saw Tima has a question about uh, um, he's curious about how realistic the audio is. Uh, if we put the object down, drop it from very hard as well as some different system browser. I mean. Yeah, actually, this is a, a good question. Uh, so uh, actually, um, actually, this TDW paper just accept uh, on the neural track. And in this paper, actually, we have um, uh, evaluated many very interesting in work physics problem. I and mean, for them, when you hear a, a, I mean, a hear an object a sound, I mean, so we, he can basically imagine what is the material of this object. So we can do, based on this sound, we can uh, purely use this sound to do the, uh, I mean, the mass estimation, the material estimation, as well as the height. Uh, I mean, the, I mean, uh, I, mean the, I mean, the dropping height estimation. Um, so uh, uh, actually, uh, this task itself actually is a, is a very challenging task. Uh, actually, uh, we're just using some uh, advantage transformer or CNN architecture to do that kind of you know, work physics problem. Uh, it generally not works that well. Actually, um, to, to, uh, I mean, to me, actually, it's a still very, very hard task. And I, just, and I think it will achieve around the 60% accuracy, like this number. And uh, and also uh, regarding spectrum about the Tomen gap with the simulation and the, the and also the real world. Actually, in this paper, I also test. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, this model that uh, we train our model on the simulation, and then we collect another uh, evaluation set using the real world dropping sound. And uh, uh, I mean, for the material qualification. Uh, we found that the model can perform uh, particularly very reasonable good performance. And I think the, the performance gap uh, of the real world and the, uh, the simulation validation side is very close. And, uh, but uh, for some high animation, because both them, even the model also fail in the, in the simulation. So, um, so we, we have no insight how much this kind of drop sound can be uh, I mean, for, for them, the dropping height, that's kind of very hard. Physical estimation task can be transferred to the to the real world. Um, but uh, as, as we expect, I think this is, I mean, in this very time, it uh, makes sense to start from some simulation. P 
because the whole communication community currently don't have too many effort to study that kind of universe physics task. And, uh, uh, and also there's a, a, a question from Dima that uh, whether we can put your own CAD model uh, to the sun. Uh, I think the answer will be yes and no. Uh, of course, our simulator with, uh, I mean, the, uh, uh, the uh, I mean, the appropriate uh, preprocessing, it can work on any uh, CAD model. Uh, but at the same time, actually, you need to follow up the uh, the model processing. But uh, we have released uh, around the 20,000 object model uh, on our website and uh, covers most uh, commonly used uh, object category based on the world night. Uh, but uh, if you have some particular uses, so if you find something missing, you can email us. We are happy to, uh, I mean, adding new object category into the simulator. Yeah. And also, I find he has a question that uh, uh, oh. how did the TW simulator generate to reverse scenario? For example, in video action recognition, people are interested in action like fighting, people falling. We don't have enough label training. If you can create a larger uh, of video database TW model, yeah, this is uh, um, I mean, it's a, a very good question. Um, and uh, actually, we have some preliminary effort to evaluate the image pre-trained on TW. So, so, so basically, we have a TW image data size, and we using that one for pre-training. I think that we can close the domain. Uh, I mean, the gap with uh, uh, with images is we seen five percent something, but it's it's still not as good as the ImageNet pre-trained model, but uh, it's very close. And we haven't uh, evaluated the human action recognition model, uh, but uh, it's a, an interesting point that, uh, uh, I mean, so basically we, we can use this simulator and put in human body in very diverse, I mean, so human action uh, data set that we can simulate many human action, uh, you know, um, many uh, daily human action videos. Um, but 